Amen, amen. Well, good morning, RCF family. I'm just so glad to be here today. Uh, it's been a journey. Uh, I've been pressing through to get here today. I'm just going to be real with y'all. I'm going to be real with y'all from the beginning to the end of this 30 minutes that I'm up here. And I have exactly 30 minutes. So I'm going to keep to that. Um, but with that, you know, I am honored to be here. And, you know, Pastor Felix came up to me a few weeks ago and was like, you know, Cerise, I, I want you to share a word with the people in a few weeks. I was like, I ain't got nothing to say. I don't even got a message prepared. And he was like, you know, don't worry about it because God will give it to you. And, you know, I did with all us Christians, all the saints do, well, well let me pray on it. I, I kid you not, I really said that. I was like, let, let me pray, you know, because I if I get the confirmation, I know I'll be ready to go. And sure enough, right afterwards, God downloaded a word that I believe and a message that is in season and in time and so relevant to ensure that we go to our next. So, uh, so I just want to just thank you, y'all. Y'all already know that we have one of the best pastors, leaders in the world, Pastor Felix and Pastor Katani. I mean, they set such a high bar, but what's so great about them is they have a genuine love for people, all people. And with that love, they're not, share, they're not scared to share. To, to the simple fact I'm sitting right here, standing right here today shows that. And so Lord, I just thank y'all for your obedience and for giving the space and for continuing to persevere. Because y'all have demonstrated what I'm about to talk to, about today. I'll keep on keeping on. Amen, amen. So with that being said, um, you can grab your Bibles. Everyone grab their Bibles. We're going to, uh, my sister Tiffany already set me up. We're going to Isaiah 43. I was a little disappointed that we couldn't go through it all. But my sister set me up for today. And we're going to go to Isaiah 43. Um, and we're going to start at verse number 18. I'm going to go through 19. So if we all got that. And we're going to stay here for a while. So I just want you to keep it. Um, I'm going to continue to go back. And I'll be reading from the ESV. And here's what verse 18 says. Do not remember the former things or ponder the things of the past. Listen carefully. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even put a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So the title for just for the message that I'm sharing with you today is Keep On Keeping On. So I'm just going to pray. Y'all pray with me. Lord, I'm just humbled and just honored to be before you. And I'd completely surrender. And God, have your way today. Use me for your glory. And then may we all have an ear to hear what you are saying. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, like I said, we're going to continue to go through this message. And um, I just want to give you a little bit of background about this. And, and, and like I said, I want to encourage you, if you get a chance, to read through all of Isaiah. Because um, Isaiah was, in, and just to let you know about Isaiah, he was one of the later prophets, or, you know, the literary prophets, those who left prophetic names, you know, by, you know, works through their names. So you have Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and Isaiah. Now, Isaiah was referred to um, a lot as the prince of prophets. You know, his name means the Lord saves. So then right there, even with his name, our names are powerful. And so with that, the Lord saves. And, and, and what we know about Isaiah is he prophesied imminent judgment. So, you know, judgment. But then eventual restoration. And so for the people, of, and, and this is for the people of Babylon, so the Israelites, this is what we've been studying. We've been studying about this. And if we know about the Israelites, a lot of them were in captivity due to their sin. And so Isaiah was like, listen, uh, I need y'all to get yourselves together so you, can, so you can be all that God has for you. And then, um, so my focus primarily is going to be on chapter 19. Um, and so if we can just begin there. And I'm going to start at the beginning again. And it says, listen carefully. I'm about to do a new thing. Now, what that means, and, and, and it just caused me to pause. So God's about to do a new thing. 
And what we need to remember is that we can't stay stuck in our past. You know, because that'll keep us from the new thing that God is doing. God wants, um, you know, and that's what happened to the Israelites. They were stuck in their discouragement of being in Babylon and, and the seduction of Babylon. See, you can be stuck in your bondage thinking that everything is okay because a lot of us have become complacent in where we are. Where God is saying, you know, you're too comfortable right now. I want to do something new, but are you ready for the new? And, and I like the word listen. Because that's a word right there, because we got to listen to what's being said. So even in the midst of distress, even in this COVID-19 season, God can and is doing a new thing. So then I just want to think, I just want to say that God wants to need, want to do a new, th- new thing, but he needs us um, to begin to clear that. So when, when folks say, and we shouldn't be surprised about this message around a new thing, because we've heard Pastor Felix, last week Pastor Katani said that, and so it's been a message, but the point is, are we listening? Because God is doing a new thing. I, I mean, our, God has already started doing a new thing. I'm sitting here talking to empty seats right now, just a few people up in here, but I know I'm talking to thousands across the World Wide Web. So with that being said, God is doing a new thing. And so when God is doing a new thing, we also know our God is no respecter of person. So if God says he's doing a new thing for Pastor Cerise, Pastor Felix, if for Tiffany, it's for all of us. Because God's no respecter of person. So what I need you to believe is that God wants to do a new thing with you right now today. So then if we continue to go in verse number 19, because I'm still going to stay there. Because I want you to really break this down and get the understanding because there's so much power in this word. And God's word does not turn back void. It's these promises are relevant to us today. So now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? So I'm going to be doing something new. (laughs) And are you going to even be able to see it? But now for the Israelites, though, now now this is a deeper level because it's easy to say, well, I didn't see it. But will you be aligned with God's spirit when he leads us to something new? Will you know it? See, that's on us. It's it's so easy to look at other people. but, But where's your path going? Are you aligned? Are you following the spirit? And, and, and I'm going to take this a little bit deeper because following the spirit isn't necessarily following a church. You need to be obedient what God has told you to do in this season, in this time. Our alignment is with God. If you don't have your relationship with God t- tuned in and tightened in, then you could be thinking you're going in the right path. And God is saying, wait, it's springing up and, and you in the wrong place. You in the wrong zone. So then, we're going to continue to go on. I will even put a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Okay. So this is when, um, you know, even in the wilderness and and desert, God is in control. God is with us. And so I was just thinking about all the uncertainty and chaos going on in the world today. You have this coronavirus shutting down the whole world um, with folks, um, you know, can find themselves in a desert situation. That desert situation that I've lost provision, my job, furloughs, you know, things are getting cut. It feels like I'm in a desert. I'm sitting here with my kids. I'm a teacher now. I'm sitting here counting down, waiting for summer break. I'm in a shut in. I'm not isolated. I'm all alone in this time. It can feel like a desert. And then I say this with all seriousness. You know, there's so much civil unrest that's going on across the U.S. right now. Um, Even as I was preparing my message today, I was just, you know, I'm hearing every day. I turn on the social media. I'm looking in my um, newspaper, and I see another article about one of our brothers and sisters that's being killed, brutally killed and murdered at the hand. So um, there's folks that are just emboldened in their immortal beliefs right now. It's as though we're, you know, in all of this roughness and lawlessness that's going rampant throughout the U.S., it's as though we're living in a modern-day wild, wild west. 
wilderness. And this is pre-corona. So that's what I want you all to know, because some of us are being tuned in because corona and all this other stuff, but let's think about it even before. But I want you to rest assured, because God's word also says, if we continue to go down, that I will even put a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So often when God makes a promise, we think about, well, how's God going to do it? How's, how's he going to put a road in the wilderness? But then that's what we just stand on, his word of what he says, because he will make a road in the wilderness. He, he has resources and plans that we don't even know about, which leads me to believe that God has a divine purpose for this season of quarantine. You know, as Pastor Kay stated last week, it's time to reset. And that reset is powerful. And for us to align ourselves to the road or path God has for us in the midst of this wilderness or desert. Because he's already said in his word, if we just read, if we're on the right path. So we need to check ourselves to today, really do a test to really make sure, am I on the right path? Because God said that there's going to be a river. So, you know, a lot of folks thinking they're in a storm right now, and they are. But God, it says, rest assured, I'll provide a river, I'll provide a road. But in order to be aware and reap the benefits of God's new thing, we have to do our part and keep on keeping on. Because we know faith without works is dead. And so that's, you know, and, and so I'm going to just explain, because I'm saying keep on keeping on, keep on keeping on. And I don't want to assume everyone understands what keep on keeping on means. I mean, I know Curtis Mayfield had a song about keep on keeping on. And I know that a lot of the activists use this term as well. But in keep on keeping on, it's meant to preserve or continue your course of action even in the face of difficulty, to continue some activity in general as best as one can. So we are being stretched, we are being tested, but who are you gonna trust? And when it seems as though hope is lost at this time, who are you gonna rely on? And I'm gonna give you all some steps. So that's why I'm here today. I just got some four easy tips or some reminders of what we all need to be doing in and through this season to keep on keeping on, to ensure that we are aligning ourselves in the right track. So can I go through those steps? And then I want you to say, keep on keeping on. As a matter of fact, turn to your neighbor. If you have a neighbor, say, keep on keeping on. Point to yourself to keep on keeping on because you have to do your part in this season to ensure you are aligned. Your misalignment, the folks in Israel were missing out on the new thing because they weren't aligned. So point number one is prayer. I mean, this shouldn't be a surprise, but prayer is our link to our Father, who is the ultimate source of provision. And so it's your communing with God. And when I say prayer, I'm not saying prayer, I need this, I need that, I need you to take care of this person, because, you know, I've, I've, had, I've been guilty of those type of prayers. I'm talking about you're really pressing in and asking God, okay, God, I'm here just talking with you. It's just me and you. Because what's interesting is God knows our heart. And as we're praying, listen, what's God telling you to do? Because God is speaking. That's why you, we're hearing the same message over and over, because I'm wondering if God is speaking, but as his people actually listening to what's being said. So as you're praying, take the time to listen. And, you know, in the women's ministry, we, uh, at our meeting last month, we were, we've been talking about prayer and the power of a praying woman. And when it, we were reading the book, Power of the Praying Woman, and I had shared with the group, I had been reading, um, and one of the activities in the book is, you know, you need to ask God, who do you need to forgive? Prayer that time. I remember to be, I began praying, and as I began praying, and I asked God, you know, who do I need to forgive? Now, I want you to know, when I started to pray, I was like, I just had one person on my list. That was that person I was mean to that day. You know, so I was like, okay, God, I, I know why I got to do this. You know, so I thought it was just one person. And I sat and I got in my prayer closet 
And I just asked God, I was like, okay, God, who do I need to forgive? And y'all, I kid you not, all these names just kind of flowing through like a whole Rolodex of people that I needed to forgive. Things that I forgot. That dormant things that, but I, w- I want you to know, and the reason I'm saying this, we got to continually ask God what needs to be clean, cleaned up out of us. Sometimes you're wondering, okay, well, why isn't God using me? Why isn't it? Because God needs a clean vessel to be used. I'm not saying that we're perfect, but God needs that willing vessel. But that vessel has to be cleaned up and all that gunk has to come out. So you got to go before the Father. And I, I, was in, I was so amazed. And I'm telling you, y'all, this was at the, the beginning of this year. So this wasn't, I did this activity six months ago. I did this a, couple, a few weeks ago, a few months ago. And so God will prepare you if you commune, if you spend that time. And so that means you have to create the atmosphere for prayer because prayer just doesn't happen. You have to take that time. You have to make the time, and then you can go forward in prayer. So that's point number one is prayer. And so then after prayer, then you got to study your word. You got to be in your word because that's how we know who God's, who who God is. That's how God demonstrates. There is promises for us through Genesis to Revelations. And if you don't take the time to read your word, You won't know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You won't know that my God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. You don't know that the battle is not yours, it is the Lord. You have to know what this word says. This isn't a bunch of stories. These are God's promises to us. This is God's instructions on how we live. So I want to encourage you to get in your word. And at this time, you can get Bible apps. There's really no excuse for not being able to get into the word. So really, so now we pray. Now we're in our word. And then, um, you know, after that is, now this is the hardest one. I didn't even want to write it down, but God was like, write it down, Cerise, write it down. Obey. You know, the folks missed out because they weren't listening. The folks missed out because they didn't trust God. They froze, and so if I'm praying, if I'm studying God's word, and God's telling me to do something, then I must obey. Obedience. Now everyone loves, you know, because obey and you'll be blessed. It's plain and simple. Deuteronomy 28 says, and if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do All his commandments that I command you this day, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth and all these blessings. All these blessings. It didn't say some blessings. It says all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed will you be in the wilderness. Blessed will you be in the river. And so I want to just take a moment and just pause real quick, and I want you to think about what has God called you to do? Even now, God may be calling you to go back to school, to start serving in ministry, you know, to start that business. And you're probably thinking, how am I going to start a business? I'm watching business close left and right, northeast, south, and west. And so really taking the time and, and know that sometimes when this obedience, obedience is hard. Now, this is something that's a constant struggle. This is, this is a day-to-day struggle for me. Now, and that might not be for the other folks in here, but for me, being obedient, when God wakes me up and say it's time to pray, and I'm like, oh, goodness, I'm tired. I don't want to pray right now. Now, this week, you know, I was setting up. I, God, God could have told me to wake up and stay up all night and pray to make sure I was ready for this. But still, it's, it's a lifestyle of making sure that you're being obedient. And then when you're thinking about obedience, if God tells you to do something that you may not want to do, and in those who are called to serve, I, I, I just really want to just ta- challenge you, do whatever God tells you to do. And do it with a spirit of excellence. Our God loves a cheerful giver. 
I've been in situations where I've had to serve and I was like, okay, God, are you sure you want me to do this? Do I have to do this? And I did it out of pure obedience because I didn't want to be misaligned. And so your lack of obedience can be while you're off the path. You might be blaming COVID. You might be blaming all these different things. But to be honest, if you take the time really to think, maybe it's because I'm not on the right path with God. And where did I fall off the path with God? So I just really want you to think about that as when you're thinking about and, and just know that and, and, with, and with everyone, God has a calling and a purpose for each and every single person. God has gifted all of us with talents that he wants to use to, for the body of Christ. To, so if there's gifts and talents, um, and so I don't want you to be fearful God may be telling you, because, you know, God works outside of our time as well, too. So God's time frames aren't our time frames as well. And so just be watchful, just be obedient, and just continue to trust God. So I've gone over prayer, being in the word, being obedient. And this, my last point, is watch out for distractions. Distractions are real, y'all. And distractions, and distractions can manifest. And, you know, we talk about the enemy brings in the darts, you know, to bring us down. Those darts are typically distractions. Because the devil knows what we like. So a distraction can be a person. And it can be anything that gets you away from God's will. So just note that. It's anything. So really making sure that you... You know, whether it's TV, social media, that you're aware. And so as I wrap up, I want to encourage you to just keep on keeping on. God is doing a new thing. We can't afford to miss out on the new thing that God has for each of us. And I believe at this time of reset um, is a divine and essential order to ensure that we are aligned following the path of God. So we've been reset in this time to make sure that we are on the right path. Isaiah 43, 18 states, forget the former things, do not dwell on the path. So God is pouring out a fresh anointing. What worked in 2019 is not going to work right now in this new season. So Jesus reminds us, you, and so Jesus told, told us that. Jesus reminds us that you can't put new wine in old wineskin. Because what's old and stagnant uh, cannot be renewed or reformed. So God will often look for new vessels to contain his new work. Also, the fresh anointing this season, I believe, will unleash the greater works. And Jesus said in John 14, 12, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than those will he do. So I honestly believe the reason we're not seeing the greater works Because if Jesus was walking on water, healing the blind, um, you know, raising the dead, and Jesus said that he would do, that we would do greater, it's because we're not pushing forward. We're not keep on, keep on. We're not making the sacrifice to be in prayer, to be obedient, to study the word, to really get our vessel ready so we can be a gift to the body of Christ. And if we would just hone in in this season, because we've all been shut in and really shut in, because I believe God is looking down. I was like, you know, y'all shut in, but you're still not pressing in. You're still not going before me. So I just want to encourage you right now to take the time. I don't care if you just got saved today. God has a plan and a purpose. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And God is doing a new thing for you as well. So God has new things for us, but we don't want to be like the Israelites and miss out due to our disobedience, due to our not moving forward in all that God has for us. And with that, I'm just encouraged to just embrace that God is and will do a new thing as long as you keep on keeping on. So, And with that being said, let us pray. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you for each and every single one of my sisters and brothers, Lord. Lord, I know that you have a great and mighty things in store for them. You're doing a new thing, a new work in the, within them. And so, Lord, I'm just asking you for a fresh anointing just to flow, that they recognize the newness and the gifts that you're stirring into their lives. Lord, I just thank you that they will push through, that they will keep on keeping on. They will pray. They will be in their word. They will put you first because your word says to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto them so Lord I just thank you for the new that's unfolding in Jesus Christ's name we pray amen